Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Bison Video Blog, brought to you by Gate City Bank with the Forum's Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo from WDAY Sports. Quarterfinal weekend is on tap. North Dakota State with a rematch against the University of South Dakota in Vermilion. Saturday afternoon at 1.30 to see the game on WDAY. It almost seems to me... The game seems secondary with what's happening today. And <laughs> or what's I, not happening today, right, that's as good far point. as that's we know. That's why I want to lead off on yeah. that, because uh, we we asked our viewing audience on Hot Mike, what do you want us to talk about? Uh, the transfer portal of the upcoming game, 67% said the portal, Jeffrey. And the news is out there that there have been significant amount of money offered to a handful of Bison players from FBS schools as of 2.50 Central Time. <laughs> Nobody is in there yet. Doesn't mean it isn't going to happen, but this is real. As many as fans want to maybe, and I'll say it, stick their heads in the sand and ignore it, this is real. It's come to Fargo after all these years. And I feel like it's come to uh, to Fargo, and it's more real than it ever has been. I know we, I, we've seen guys leave. You know, you had the Dom Jones, Kobe Johnson, those types of players. But I feel like this is the first time where there's been more legitimate offers before guys have hit the portal. Yes. Because last year in this case, there's guys that hit the portal that had nothing on the table. And so in, in essence, they, they, they throw the risk, they throw it at the wind. And in the case of say DJ Hart, never ended it. Eubanks, I don't think got anything that he's hoping for. Kobe Johnson apparently wanted to come back. And, but here in this case are guys who there's legitimate, apparently, yes. apparently yes. there's legitimate offers on the table. Yeah, that's, it's a great point. Marquis Siegel went in, but I think he had options, Colpack. That might be the one difference, but a Dom Ganella, yeah. a DJ Hart, a Courtney Eubanks, a Kobe John, they were hoping for what has been offered to the players that we believe it's been extended to. Yeah, and that's, that's a that's huge the difference. That's a real part of it. And that, that's a huge yep. difference yep. In, the, in this whole thing. And that's why I think you, you saw the big meeting on, on Sunday yep. with the Green and the Gold Collective is there was a certain, I think urgency is the word that we've heard, there's a certain urgency to it. And now that doesn't mean that NDSU is going to match these FBS offers. They're not. Nope. They're not going to match 100000 But if you give some expenses, if you can get some guys home at Christmas or give a kid a five, ten grand here and there, and then maybe it'll prevent guys from going into the portal yes. with who don't have anything. Right. At least it gets your foot in the door here. At this time last year, there was nothing. Now they're at least here. We can be in the conversation. You're not going to match $250,000. There's no dollar for dollar matching going to happen at North Dakota State. But if you can get to ten to 15000 I understand that for some is an exorbitant amount of money. But this is what we're talking about. If NDSU wants to play with the big boys, this is what the big boys are doing right now. Well, if NDSU wants to play with the boys that they're playing with right now, yeah. I mean, you're talking right. about Montana State, Montana. Yep. They have collectives. Yep. Now, they don't give 20, 30, 40,000, but they do have a, a collectives where they give players a few thousand dollars. Right. That's what NDSU at least has to match. You talk about playing with the big boys, you need to play with those those guys too first. I and, mean, and the you're all division. Guys. And the reason why we're talking about today is the portal window open today. Now, you've heard and seen other guys have, well, I'm going to enter. Today is when the, <laughs> the actual window uh, is open. Mm -hmm. And I asked Matt Entz this at the press conference, like, so basically, are you counting heads that get on the bus to go to Vermilion on on Friday night? That may exactly what it comes down to. We just don't know. Well, I feel like it's it's Monday afternoon, and I feel like we, if we haven't heard about anybody going in now, I just don't think it'll. Maybe? I mean, because you know. would know, I would think, as a player, you can't. What are you gonna let them know Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday? I mean, in this day and age, man, I I put nothing past that anymore. Because what if said team says, okay, well, if this won't get you, what if we give you this? What if we up it? Then, you know what I mean? Or maybe they agreed and after the season. See, but that, I have people ask me that, and I think you'll attest to this. With the early signing period is now, teams aren't mm. going to wait. Good point. You know what I mean? Like, here's the bag of money. If you're not going to, we're going to go to the next guy. So long for now. And that's, I, I just don't think with with the, how the coaching cycle works and now early signing period, I don't think teams are waiting around anymore. That's a valid point. You know, yeah. I just don't think that's yeah. going to happen. So, to your point, I think you're, you're, you're more right than that, that if, if it hasn't happened yet, maybe it's not going to. I just don't think it's over. If the Bison season keeps going, the window's open until January the 2nd. So, well, it's never over <laughs> it's, portal talk. <laughs> it's just crazy on that. Now, how about to the football game? Yeah, there's a game, isn't there? The Bison yeah. are playing South Dakota. The Coyotes are making their first ever FCS quarterfinal appearance after they beat Sacramento State on Saturday at the Dakota Dome 34 to 24. Bob Nielsen's team just keeps doing it. They're 10 and 2 on the season. They are 7 and 1 at home. They are the number three seed. They've played dynamite defense all year long. We thought, I don't know if this was smoke and mirrors, but they're still playing, Jeff. 
Well, they do it with dynamite defense, yeah. and they do it specifically with scoring defense. And, and they're fifth in the country. Here's in, a scoring in touchdown right here that they forced on Saturday. But you look at their, their defense, their, their stats, and their numbers. They're 46, which is about halfway of the FCS. They're 46 in rushing defense, fifth in scoring defense. That, to me, just doesn't add up. No. That tells me you're just having some guys who are making plays like we just saw in the yep. prior highlight there. You know, passing defense, they're pretty good. On, they're 15th in passing defense. Miles Harden's a big reason yeah, why. They got some dudes back there in the secondary. And so when you look at uh, if you're not giving up a whole lot in the air and, and you do well enough on the ground, yep. I guess you can keep teams out of the end zone. And that, this, this is the intriguing part of a team. We've, you've written about it a ton. We've spoken about it. They won three football games last Amazing, year. Amazing, isn't this it? similar to what we saw in Fargo with the bison of 2009 to what, or, and then to 2010 of what we're seeing at USD this season? Well, this team, I guess it would end then in the quarterfinals if we're talking about 2010. Yet, but, but, but yeah. But uh, of course. I mean, yeah. NDSU was 3 and 8 in, in 2009. South Dakota, same thing. Three wins last year. How do you change it? Well, they had some injuries last year, too. I don't think you could overlook that. They had a that. brutal schedule to start last year, too. They, yeah, four games. Yeah. Uh, the first four were, were just were, were awful. And just maybe in an off season that you get bigger, faster, stronger, add a few players. Uh, you know, Thomas coming back at running back has helped. Their two linebackers are two of the best pair in FCS. Yep. And they're big. They're 235 pounds, both Helios and Brock Mogensen. I think they're NFL prospects, in mm -hmm. my opinion. At least Mogensen is. And so if, when you have a good defense, and, and then I, I think Aiden Bauman has given him a, a sense of stability at quarterback. He's big. He's got, He's got that... Uh, that that macho ness that, yeah. that 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 mystique a little bit. What am I trying? To, some moxie is yeah, the word. There is your yeah, word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some moxie. <laughs> I look at you wrote about this. Guy gave a huge assist to David Herbster. Is no longer there. Former USD AD. Yeah. He stuck with Bob Nielsen after I thought that Bob would be gone after the three win season last year. They didn't. They hired Josh Davis from SDSU to be the offensive coordinator. And boy, it's been a a stri you know, strike of gold there, the, how they've changed things around. Yeah, the column I did after South Dakota beat the Bison 24-19 yeah. in homecoming uh, was essentially I, I credited Dave Herbster for keeping Bob Nielsen yep. in the offseason despite all the uh, apparent and I perceived uh, pro uh, uh, people who wanted Bob Nielsen out, but Dave Herbster stuck to his guns. And Dave sent me a text, I think, a couple days later. I'm not going to share <laughs> yeah. exactly what he said, but sent me a text uh, saying, um, yeah, I, I, he took a lot of heat. Yeah, he I don't doubt it about it, and it's paid off here in spades. We mentioned that game in September. It was homecoming. It was, seems like 10 years ago. Uh, it was the end of September. The Bison coming off a of bye week with USD coming in. And SD, USD got out. It was 21-3 to at halftime. Just the Bison were sleptwalked through that game. They, they got close but ran out of time in a game that – had just so few possessions. I, this does not look like the Bison team we have seen over the last month. Here. It was a second straight Bison game against USD where their first half was just really dreadful. not good. The one last year down at yep. Vermillion, they, their first half was just yeah, dreadful. Yep. Was that your word? Yep. That, that's that's pretty appropriate. It was not good at the Fargo Dome here in, in the first game. They played better in the second half. You can't do that three times in a row. You can't do that in the right. playoffs. And you got to believe the crowd is going to be jacked up. So 9,100, what do you make of that? And I mean, there's going to be some Bison fans in attendance. Is this, I don't, it can't, it can be as loud as Northern Iowa, UND. Do we expect that on Saturday? Hey, Vermillion, if you don't show up now, <laughs> you're not coming. You're not right? showing. I yeah. mean, what else do you want? It's national television yeah, here. For what else program, do you want? You got the right? Bison at home. Yep. You got national TV on Triple ABC. Yeah, yep. You're deep in the playoffs. Yep. It's, it's a, it seems like a pretty fun team to watch. Uh, what else do you want? I'll say this the Bison are healthy. And they found a way to win on Saturday. It seems forgotten. We haven't talked about how they won the game on Saturday, but this is a healthy football team, and I think a confident one that's going to Vermillion. You know how they won it? Yeah, the block. The big that's block. Exactly right. The, the big mark on, on the, the arm. The Bozeman block from, you got your from Hunter Podges. I'll get one. That's yeah. pretty good. But that's to my point. Is They're playing their 11th straight week, and I asked Entz about that. Is this the time you think that the gas would – be out of the tank here after you're playing now for your 11th straight Yeah, game. That, that was a good question. I can't remember exactly how he answered it, but I don't think the gas is out of the tank yet. Now, if the Bison win on Saturday and then they have to go Another to flight. Missoula, yeah. Yeah, then yeah. you're then you're then you're risking. Yeah. South Dakota State ran into that a couple of years they ago did. when they had to go all over the country. Ended up at Montana State yeah. in the semifinals and just looked flat. Yeah. 
So we have eight teams left on the Bison side of the bracket, as Jeff alluded to, NDSU and USD. The bottom half of that is the both seeds advance, Furman and Montana. That's the Friday night game in Missoula. That is going to be a long, hard task for Furman on Friday night. Montana I, at home, look out. Yeah, Montana, and boy, are they playing well. Yep. I mean, I, you look at uh, Washington Grizzly, and Ooh. and they played in the snow last yeah. Saturday and looked like they're having a blast. I don't, would expect conditions not to be balmy no. by any means on this <laughs> Friday night. Furman, South Carolina, yep. not used to playing outside in the cold. That could be a, a little tall, rough. Right, it could be a lot to a little there. The other side, Villanova was the star of the weekend. I think everybody picked them to lose. They ran all over Youngstown, and now they get a date in Brookings. Yeah, what happened to Youngstown State's yeah. defense? It just disappeared. I watched most of that game, yeah. and and I'm sure Doug Phillips, head coach, was like, I don't know where my defense went either. Maybe Villanova's that good offensively. I yeah. don't recall them scoring a whole no. lot this year. They've always won with defense, too. That's been their trademark, so I don't know. But And then Idaho. How about that game? That could be the game of the weekend there. Well, I don't think that's Nick Hill's shining moment late in the oh. game. Had uh, Southern Illinois, they were tied, driving down, and they, they settled for a 40-yard field goal. Uh -huh. He had timeouts to burn. I would have run at least two more plays, at least try to get 10, yeah. 15 more yeah. yards. I mean, for, th this isn't the NFL, guys. I mean, uh, these are college kickers, and this is the guy I think he had to win his job he back, did. too. Yeah, Jake he Palmgard, had to, he had to win his job and last And week. then you leave yep. it to a 40-yard yeah, right. field goal, yeah, and, and then it was it was off, and then Idaho wins in overtime. I would not be surprised if Albany goes and wins that game. I mean, I, uh, them indoors, Idaho did not impress me offensively. This is a chance for the Great Danes I'm to win that I game. I'm still not having a hard time getting my hands around Albany yeah. and how good – the Great Danes are, especially since we saw them just a couple years ago. Two years ago, yeah. and they, they look pretty in. Eh. Yeah. But again, I think what South Dakota is proving and Albany is proving that in FCS football, you can get good in a hurry. Yep. And they've done that. Real quick before we go, it is a big basketball night here in town. The Bison men have three games at home, starting off tonight with Tim Miles and San Jose State. Miles is back for the first time since 2007 when he's the head coach at Colorado State. This is going to be a fun environment here tonight just to see Tim back. And uh, in the building, he promised to numerous recruits. Now he's going to coach in it tonight. Yeah, now he got rid of his glasses, yes. too, a little LASIK. So <laughs> it's a different looking Tim Miles. But good for him for bringing his – and this is not – no charitable thing on his part. He needed games. Yep. I mean, he's sitting there in June with seven games yet to schedule. You think NDSU has trouble scheduling. Well, look at Tim Miles. Yep. I mean, he got his program pretty good, and nobody wanted to play him. <laughs> they, uh, SCSU beat NDSU 78-65 last week in San Jose. Uh, this is a good game for the Bison, Jeff, because the Mountain West doesn't travel to Fargo. That's yeah. why how big this is tonight. We, you know, we just saw a clip of Ben Woodside yeah. after the game, and, and it was at 2007. Yeah. Uh, Woodside was at Sunday's practice, and so That's he awesome. and Miles stay in touch, pretty, obviously uh, pretty close. That's good stuff. And I think Tim Miles, just his general personality, has, has kept in touch with a lot of people in the area. He's gonna. There's going to be people from Mary, University of Mary, his alma mater, Mayville, South, South Dakota. South Dakota, I imagine. Dolan, South Dakota, he might, have, represented. He might have their biggest San Jose crowd of the year. <laughs> A lot of the colors wearing this tonight at the Shack. You can watch that game, of course, on WDAY Extra. Don't forget, we'll be live in Vermilion Saturday morning for Bison Game Day at 10 a.m. Jeff, myself, Logan, and Kyle will be there. And, yes, the football game is on WDAY. Not with us. The ESPN people are calling the game. But 1.30 on Saturday for North Dakota State and South Dakota, the winner to get a trip to the FCS semifinals next week. Full week of coverage from Jeff, Eric, and Mike. We'll be back with our Bison Media Zone show coming up on Wednesday as well. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the Bison Video Blog brought to you by Gate City Bank.